In this video, we're gonna create a cool cutaway tune effect in Arnold for Cinema 4D. Let's get started. Hey, what's up? It's Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, we're gonna be using Arnold for Cinema 4D to create a cool isometric tune effect using Clip Geo. The model I'm using is a free model from GrabCAD. I'm gonna put a link to that below the description. If you wanna learn all about Arnold, I recommend checking out our Intro to Arnold series over on Grayscale Gorilla Plus. We've got over 10 hours of professional Arnold training to get you up and running. All right, enough talk, let's jump into the video. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D R21. We've got our Bugatti engine, which you can grab for free on GrabCAD. I'll throw a link to that down below. Let's set up our isometric camera first. I think that'll be the first step. So let's grab our menu, our Arnold menu over here, go to Arnold camera, grab an ortho camera, and let's zero this out, and boom, zero it all out. Let's grab a uh, skylight, and let's turn off the render, or sorry, in the viewport so I don't blind myself. Let's uh, hit go on the IPR, and there we have it. Let's look through our ortho camera, and let's set up the, the correct isometric uh, angles on this camera, which is going to be uh, 45 degrees in the heading and negative 30 yeah, okay, cool. So it looks pretty good, but we need to move that camera out of the center. And if we do that right here, and we move it up, you're gonna see that we uh, no longer are clipping, but we're not really getting any closer to our engine. So what do we need to do here? Plus our viewport is not matching what we're looking at here in the IPR. Uh, so let's fix that. Let's grab our camera, go over to the object, and we're gonna choose projection mode of parallel. And what that does is it now aligns it in a way that makes sense for our, uh, matches our IPR. The other thing that we're going to do, uh, you can do this a couple different ways. You can grab the handles right here on your camera and adjust the zoom, or you can just do that right here in the zoom tab under the camera object. I kind of prefer to do it with these handles because it's a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to come over to my top view. Let's go over here and maybe now we're just going to center this out a little bit and try to find our center. And something like in this range looks pretty good. And let's look at the, all right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so we got our, our uh, isometric camera going here, ready to move on to the next step, which is going to be getting the clip geo working with our engine. Okay, so let's do some clipping with our clip geo. Uh, firstly, I am going to add a ground. So I'm gonna add a disc and we're gonna bring that size pretty high up here. I'm not really going to pay too much attention to the lighting or anything. I'm just using a skylight in here right now just to uh, get us started. Um, let's go ahead and add a object that we're going to use to clip out. We're going to use a cube because that's going to be super simple and I'm just going to bring it over. Whoops. Let's go ahead and grab a cube. Put it right here on the edge of our engine. That's looking pretty good. Okay. So um, the way Clip Geo works is uh, it's a shader, it's a material. Uh, you come down here, you grab uh, Arnold Surface Clip Geo, and whatever you assign this to, it's gonna chop out of everything in the scene. So if I put this on this cube, we're instantly gonna see this cool cross-section of this engine. And I can move this around, and it's super fast, because this isn't doing a real Boolean, it's doing like a render time Boolean. And it's super useful. You know, you can use any shapes. You can use a sphere. We can just grab a, a sphere, drop that in, hide the cube, throw the clip geo on the sphere, and boom, there we go. We've got like a cool like cross-section sphere happening. Maybe just on this edge here, we want to see the insides of this engine, see how it works, all that kind of crazy stuff. Pretty cool. Now, if I have this go down to the ground, you're gonna notice that we're also chopping it out of the ground too, and that's not anything that we want. So we can control what it's chopping out and what, what it's not chopping out. And I'm gonna show you how to do that really quickly here. Let's say that we have this cube that we're gonna to use to chop out this engine, and we're gonna we're gonna make it kind of tall, and it's chopping out our ground, and that's not something that we want. Well, we're gonna control that with trace sets in Arnold here. So grabbing the Clip Geo material, you're going to see here what we have a couple of different uh, controls. What we are going to be messing with is trace set. We're going to give it a name. We're just going to say engine. We're going to type engine in here. Could be any word you want, any word that you can remember. I'm just going to copy it so that I don't have to remember to type it. So um, right now we need to tell it, okay, this trace set that Clip Geo is working with is called engine. So anything with that trace set is going to get this chopped out. It's going to be applied to it. So if we grab our engine and we put on an Arnold tag, 
we can now come over to the uh, show custom parameters. We're going to make sure that's turned on and we're using a poly mesh as our type and jump back over to the main tab. And we're just going to click one on our little tray set here to add a tray set. And we're going to type in, or I remember to copy it so I can paste it engine. There we go. Now we don't have this, uh, this clip geo object chopping out of the ground. It's only going to chop out of things that have that tray set of engine. So that is pretty nifty. Of course, you can use multiple Clip Geo objects. In fact, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff with a Clip Geo, and I can do some weird stuff like that. We'll get into that weirder stuff a little bit later. But I wanted to show you the trace sets and how to initially set up the Clip Geo object. Uh, another interesting bit um, that you can do as well is you can have a completely different shader inside of your Clip Geo object. So I have my Clip Geo object here. I could actually just drop in a new standard surface material and let's just change the color to something that we'll recognize. And we'll dump this into the Clip Geo intersection. And what that does is it's going to create a completely different material uh, on the intersecting edges. Now keep in mind, the, the UVing of anything that's intersecting is going to be taking the UVs from your cutting object. So in our case right now, this cube. So if we had, let's say, a checker pattern. Oops, not a cache, but a checker checkerboard. If this was a checkerboard being fed into the base color of our object, and maybe we want to like increase this frequency by quite a bit so we can see it, you're going to notice that we're getting the UVs from our cube. It's not actually coming from the engine itself. So that's kind of a, a something to remember. It's a cool feature actually so that you can sort of have, you don't have to worry about those edges not, not mapping correctly. All right, so um, we've set up our, our Clip Geo. There's really not much else to it. Of course, you can have multiples. You can use whatever shape you want. Uh, and with trace sets, you can control who and what is affecting which, which Clip Geo object. All right, so we got this in a pretty good place. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, and then we're going to start to apply all of our cool tune shading stuff. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is set up my scene for tune rendering here in Arnold. Uh, you can see I've got my uh, scene back up here. I've got a, a cube as my Clip Geo object. Uh, I don't like the way it looks in the scene here, so I'm going to go ahead and add a display tag to that. So that's going to go into rendering display. I'm going to just change this to a line mode just so I don't have to look at that in my viewport and I can see my engine. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is delete this light because we are going to set up some actual like uh, distant lights and whatnot. Next thing I'm going to do is go into my render settings under the main tab in Arnold. I'm going to tweak some things. I don't, I'm not going to be using any volume indirect. I'm not going to use any subsurface or transmission. And I'm just going to knock down the remaining settings pretty low. Actually, I think I want to leave camera AA at like four. The next thing you need to do when you're doing tune rendering in Arnold is set your default filter type from Gaussian to contour. And that's going to allow us to draw lines. We don't have any transmission. Uh, diffuse at one is fine, spec at one is fine. And then under my system, I'm going to change uh, my display bucket corners and make sure that's enabled. I'm going to change my bucket size to 32, which is going to be a little smaller than default. And I usually work with an initial sample level of like negative one or something in that range. Okay, so render settings are pretty decent for right now. Uh, I've got my setup. Let's go ahead and add some lights. I'm going to add a uh, distant light. And immediately when I add a distant light, I'm also going to add a null. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to throw this null into the look at uh, input here on my distant light so that I can pull my distant light out and have it sort of be pointing at the center. And I'm just going to find a nice like lighting scenario that works for what I'm doing. A nice light here, maybe another like key light somewhere in this vicinity, maybe down a little bit lower. And what I'm doing, I'm not worried about these shadows right now. I'm just worried about how it's falling off on our object. And I'm going to move these in a second. I just wanted to establish a few lights in here. Okay, um, that's pretty good for right now. I'll know what I need to do in far as, as far as like tweaking that in a second. Uh, let me bring also my size up to 100, and I'm just going to region over the engine itself here. Okay, now let's add a tune shader to our engine and start to work some of these uh, settings in. Let's go to Create Arnold Surface Tune. I'm going to rename this Engine, and we're going to drag this onto the Engine Null. 
and immediately we start to get the tune lines, which is what we want, but we're also getting some, some black in here. And we're going to fix that in a minute, but for right now, I'm going to actually turn off my uh, Clip Geo object just so we can concentrate on the lines and where the shadows are falling on our engine here. All right, um, so if you haven't played around with the tune system in Arnold, it's fantastic. I'm not going to go into detail on all of these settings, but I'm just going to kind of quickly go through how I like to set up this type of scene. I like to work with a base color all the way at one, and then I'm just going to do some simple tone mapping. So let's grab a ramp. And the tone mapping is what's going to give us those tune shading lines. So with a ramp, you're going to want to set this to U and the type to U. And then I usually just right click this and say Interpol interpolation of all knots set to step. Then I drag this around a little bit. Two levels is fine for right now. Uh, and then we just drag this and we uh, put this into our base tone map. And voila, we have some tune shading going on. All right, so the shadow areas are going to fall on the far left of this ramp, and the highlights are going to fall eh, probably somewhere in the middle. So let's go ahead and make some shading levels. All right, let's start with our, our base shadow. And you can see I've got a couple of swatch libraries here uh, that I've been using for this sort of illustrative marker drawing kind of tune system look. And the first one is the darkest one, and that's going to be for my tune line, so I'm not going to use that. But I'm going to use this one for my absolute darkest point. And then this knot is going to be this gray, and then I'm going to add another knot, and it'll be the highlight. All right, so now I'm just going to work in this mid. I want the majority of the engine to be this like gray color and not the highlight color. So I'm going to try to find a good spot for that. And if you notice here, if I drag the shadow out, all the dark areas become extremely, uh, they start to take over the engine a little bit. So I don't want that. I want to see them, but I don't want it to be overpowering right now. And of course, we can change this later. And you don't have to work with a hard line. You could work with a smooth line, and you could sort of dial in exactly uh, how you want those to be interpolated. Maybe you want that to be kind of a soft line. So now we're getting some of that soft line. But keep in mind, this is a distant light, and that's why the shadows are going to be sharp like that. And of course, you could change that as well. But... I'm going to go undo all this stuff and get back to where I was because I'm kind of digging that. All right, so the next thing we want to do is mess around with the tune line itself. And let's jump back into our settings here. So if you jump back into your settings under the Arnold main tab, you're going to notice down here the default filter type. We changed that to contour, but next to that or under it, it says default filter with two. And that's going to be the, the max width of our, of our tune line. And that's going to be uh, resolution sort of dependent. So the larger your render, the, uh, the larger your line will get. So you'll have to sort of like push and pull that around. Uh, I know that I'm working at 100% here, so that's what I want to see. So I'm going to change this to make it a little bit wider so that I have some give and take on my tune line uh, inside of my material. Because you can adjust the, uh, the the width of all the different types of tune lines. So I'm not doing anything too crazy here. I'm going to grab my main uh, contour, uh, or sorry, my main color here under edge. And we're going to give it that color that I chose or I called out earlier for our tune lines. Okay, that's good. And the main edge, I can adjust the width here. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that actually with a noise in a second. So I'm just going to leave this at one for right now. We could also turn on silhouette. But in an object like this that has so many different pieces, silhouette isn't really going to help us. So if we made this this silhouette line red, you can see like pretty much everything has a silhouette. And maybe we'll use that. But I don't think I'm going to use it right now for this sort of simple setup. Okay, um, immediately I can see I'm not getting tune lines on a lot of these different edges that I want. So I'm going to bring my angle threshold down to maybe like 20, something like that. And you can see everything is way too thick right now. And we're going to adjust that very, very quickly. I'm going to grab a noise. I know I could use a C4D noise, but uh, I'm just going to use a regular Arnold noise. I'm going to look at the, uh, put that out to the beauty here and change the scale to like, I don't know. 30, something like that. Go back into the main tab, uh, adjust the octaves to maybe like five and the distortion kind of distort it a little bit. Now I feel like they're too small. So let's go back to 20, something like this. I'm just going to break up the, uh, the tune shading or the tune line scale. So from here, I'm going to pipe this into a range, enter, dump this into the input. And then our range, I'm going to set to like 0.7 
and maybe 0.3. So at the most small, the line will get will be a 0.3, and the largest it'll get will be a 0.7. Let's drag this into the tune edge width scale, and let's look at the output of that. And immediately it looks more illustrative. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. I feel like it could be a little bit thicker. Let's see what it looks like when we uh, add a silhouette. So I'm going to pull this off, and we're going to split this off into another range. And this range is going to be a little bit bigger. It's going to go all the way to 1, and then maybe like an output min of there. And I'm just going to pipe this into the silhouette, uh, silhouette width scale. And let's turn that on. And let's see what that's doing. The red will help me understand what's going on here. But we don't want that for final. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like with our main tune line. Actually, that looks pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I kind of dig it. And now I'm going to just dial in uh, this highlight because I feel like it's a bit... It's like everywhere right now, and I don't want that. I kind of want the highlight to be a little bit more just in the highlights there. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm not going to worry about the ground just yet. I'll probably do that last, but I'm going to add uh, a little bit of speckliness to this. I, I really like the way that uh, that looks. So let's grab a... I could do that right in here, and but I'm not going to because we're going to reference that into a couple different places. So I'm just going to grab a standard surface, delete it, grab a noise. This time I will use the C40 noise, and we're going to use the Booyah... I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but I like to say it that way because it sounds funny. All right, we're going to use Booyah, and we're going to like clamp this way the heck down and bring the scale down as well. And let's see what that looks like. And let's go ahead and invert it so that we can use it as a mask. Complement. Boom. And it's already connected there. Cool. All right, so let's jump back into our engine, and let's just drag. Let's rename this Noise. And let's drag this uh, noise into our engine as a reference. And now we can sort of figure out what we want this to be. Uh, let's throw this into a... Um, let's do a mix. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to mix this into the base color. Uh, so let's do a mix here. And we're going to throw this into our base color. And we're going to make sure that we grab that color that is our lightest color oops uh darkest color rather and then for the second color of our mix we will grab the lightest color there we go and now i'm just going to tweak this noise uh into a place where i like it uh, jumping back into the noise let's maybe bring the scale down a little bit more and I feel like there's probably a bit too much grunge right now, so I'm going to go ahead and clamp it back the other way. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Of course, I would output this and filter it in, like, in comp and make it look a little bit more, uh, you know, maybe a little more grain, a little more tooth to it. But yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, uh, I might want to add that same... Uh, I need to now work on my, my ground a little bit, so let's do that really quickly here. Let's grab another Arnold tune. And we'll re rename this background. And we'll drop this onto our disk. And did that work? Yes, OK. All right, so for this guy, I'm going to uh, pull in the exact same line, or sorry, the exact same shading. So I'm going to grab this ramp and say copy. And I could make a reference for that too, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. I'll drop this right into our base color, or base tone map rather. All right, so there we go. Let's make sure the base color is all the way to one. Good. All right, so now we've got something that's working. And for this, if you notice, if I start to like push in the uh, the tone mapping, uh, the knots on the, on the ramp that's feeding in the tone map, you're going to see the background, the shadows start to go away, which is actually good because I didn't want this shadow over here is sort of uh, annoying. I didn't really like the way that looks. And I'm going to just pop out to like an 80% so we can see the whole frame now. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, but I think I want to change my base color to match 
this color here. So I'm just grabbing that base color. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of liked it before the way it was. I'm going to bring that back to like a brighter color. Okay, cool. I do not want my shadow to be such a harsh edge going all the way to the back. So I could get fancy and I could throw some ramps and masks and all that sort of thing, but I'm, I don't want to be fancy. I'm actually going to just throw in a point light and drag that off over here and we're going to raise it up into the air. And what this is going to do is you're going to see it's like no longer a shadow. It's actually a light. Uh, and we're getting a harsh line here. And that's because in our background, we're using a harsh line in our tone map. So if I right click here and we say interpolation smooth, I'm just going to start to pull these off until I fade that shadow off. Yeah, that's looking pretty dang good. Okay, so now I might want to add some of that noise to that background as well. So let's do that. Let's pull our noise as a reference in and let's figure out how we want to mask this into our base color. So let's grab a mix and you could use a layer, but I use a mix just because it's simpler. Um, I'm going to throw, let's see, what do I want to do here? I want to mask that in via a ramp. All right, so I'm going to have a ramp here. Make sure that ramp is set to circular. Let's go ahead and look at connect the output here so I can see exactly what's going on. And I'll throw this back in here because I just want that dirt to sort of exist under the engine. All right, so that's looking good. Let's throw this into a uh, input. Let's see, what do I want to do here? I want to use it as a mix. So let's go ahead and do this. I'll be input one. Okay. And this guy wants to be white. You can see I've got it flipped right now. So I'm just going to come over here and say invert gradient. Uh, unfortunately, there's no invert colors, which would be fantastic. But lo and behold, here we are. We don't have that. All right, that's looking good. Um, pretty good anyway. Just a little bit of that tooth there. Okay, now we need to throw that onto our uh, into our base color. And there we have it. Now, I probably didn't, I probably could have built this in a way that would give me more control, uh, but I feel like this is all right. Let's bring this out back to 100. And notice that the, uh, that the noise itself is a little bit tiny, which I'm not really vibing. So I might actually go ahead and jump into this noise, grab these two nodes, copy them, and delete this, this noise, noise here that's referenced. And I'm copying in a completely new C4D noise, just so I can adjust the, uh, the scale. And let's bring that scale up to like 40. There we go. I don't, otherwise I don't really see it. I don't really feel it in there. Cool. I do think that our background is probably a bit too, too bright. So I'm going to just knock this down a little bit. There we go. And I might want a little bit more uh, dirt in our in our uh, grunge there. So I'm going to just pull this down, try to get more grunge in there. Okay, cool. Jumping out back into my engine, uh, making sure that everything is set up properly here. Let's jump, check our base color. Yep, base is good. Base color is going to be here. So, yep, yeah, all right, that's good. I'm going to actually bring that base color up a little bit something more like that okay all right now we're getting somewhere let's go ahead and initialize our cutting uh, cube that has the clip geo on it and let's address what we've got going on in here uh, okay first thing I need to do is make sure that this cube is not casting shadows uh, so let's go ahead and add a c4d to a tag on there shadows self shadow okay that helps down in this area so that's looking good now uh, and I might want to control the inside with a completely different tune shader. Uh, the other thing to note is now we've got some artifacting happening here off in the side. And I'm just going to get rid of that by extending the size of this cutting object. All right, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's jump into our Clip Geo 
and think about what we want to do here. We could completely build a new tune shader that would exist on the inside here, uh, which could work. We could do a new tune shader and pop that in and toss that into our intersection. And we could even change the line color to something like red. And that's kind of interesting, but it's not really what I want. Um, but I might want to change uh, the the thickness of that line, or maybe the how it's you know the sh the angle threshold and where it decides to draw a tune line. But I'm not going to do that because this tutorial is already going kind of long, and probably want to wrap it up here in a minute. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now let's grab our cube, and let's find like a cool spot to uh, let it go there and maybe we don't maybe we want to even thicken up the line overall a little bit more actually no that's looking pretty good uh, I do want to experiment maybe with rotating the engine 180 degrees so I'm just going to rotate it you can see the cutting object still works which is great it's, it looks so cool oh wow that looks actually pretty sweet did I get that right let me check Wow, dang, okay. So let me just take this cube now. I'm gonna play with it a little bit, try to find a cool spot. Maybe we even make it like super skinny and like put it right in the middle. Oh man, that looks cool. <laughs> Those pipes on the, on the back look so cool. Yeah, you can just instantly create like some crazy details with this uh, clip geo effect, especially with tune shading. Let's maybe take it like right here and then you could have it like, you know, reveal back or maybe you just want to like show off like a small piece. Like maybe you're just wanting to show like a cross section of like what's happening inside of these tubes or something. And you could kind of like, like bring that back and like reveal some cool stuff. Okay, cool. So, um, I did promise that I was going to show uh, off like what happens, the cool effects that happen when you have multiple cutting objects. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and save before I do that because I don't know, this might might all just fall apart. So I'm just going to save this as... Uh, and, okay, so there we go. So I'm just going to hold down Control and drag and just kind of create some copies of this cut uh, cut geo and instantly it kind of creates this really cool echo looking effect and I'm just going to try to find a spot yeah that looks pretty sweet maybe this one is going to be super thin really long so you can kind of create really interesting echo effects by by uh, sort of breaking the clip geo effect a little bit by having it overlap which is kind of fun um, that about wraps up what I wanted to show in this tutorial. Hopefully uh, you got a few nuggets out of it that were useful to you. Uh, if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments or check us out over on the GSG Connect Slack. Uh, I'm always hanging out in there, so if you have any questions, hit me up there. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Remember to check out Grayscale Gorilla Plus for tons more Arnold content. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment below, hit me with a question. All right, until next time, I'll see you around. What do you think? Good tutorial? Good video? Huh? <laughs> Giving me the side eye. <laughs>